Rock and Two Springfield's Classic Rock. It's 533 and Sticks with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. Slightly better day today. Partly to mostly cloudy. There's a slight chance of a shower, but really, really slight. A high of 45 tonight. Cloudy, low of 36. Saturday and Sunday, cloudy. Anywhere between 49 to 52 degrees. It's about 33 degrees right now in downtown Springfield. You're listening to the uh, Daily Podcast. Brought to you by Marcotte Ford. They got your back for sales, service, parts, and rentals. Marcotte Ford in Holyoke. Pretty good chance of an open line Friday today. Also, the keyword to cash and some other things, too. Hell yeah. That's right, Steve. That's what I'm talking about. You haven't shut up since you got here. You know what? I You had my mic off. I don't know why you would do that to me. My mistake. It's 534 on Rock 102. Rock 102, Springfield's Classic Rock. It's 552 and ACDC with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. It is uh, going to be uh, cloudy today with a high of 46. Tomorrow, more of the same with a high of 48. It's 31 right now in downtown Springfield. Hollywood Trash is brought to you by Aqua Pump, an expert in all water supply systems from the well to the pump and into the house. Somehow you still care about what's happening in Hollywood. So, from Tinseltown, 3,000 miles away, it's Steve Nagel's Hollywood Trash. Ah, oh, well, uh, you, got a, you got a friend. Uh, you know, you're talking about trade schools the other day. Roseanne says college will ruin your life because it's nothing but a bunch of devil worshiping, baby blood drinking Democrat donors. If you're going to the right school. Yeah. Well, now you know. Uh... Is it possible to crush up Ambien, crystallize it, and smoke it like crack? <laughs> because uh, if I think so, Roseanne's doing that. Maybe. Uh, in a video, it's take, strange. You know, she's never said anything controversial before. She was. Uh, she was in a video taken at uh, Trump's Mar-a-Lago resort, and Roseanne let us know what she's thinking these days. And apparently, that's what it is. Uh, apparently, it's she's not crushing up the Ambien and doing it. But she should be. I mean... Are she just, like, mainlining it or something? Yeah. She said, do me a favor. Drop out of college. You don't teach you nothing good. Email me or Twitter or whatever you call me, and I'll help you with your life. I don't know if I would go to her as a life coach of any real uh, of real sort. I, uh... I gotta tell you, I... Ever since, I, I don't know if it's just ingrained in my head because I was a kid when that happened, when she did that whole national anthem thing. Mm-hmm. I remember my dad getting all like really mad about that. You know, be, his alcoholism, patriotism. Uh, <laughs> you know, like because he he was so angry that she would disrespect the national anthem, sure. something uh, kind of thing like that. So. I never really liked her since then, wow, she, only because... But your dad was disrespecting a whole case of red, white, and blue heavies. Yeah, but you know what? It was always trying to find somebody who's worse off than we are. That, <laughs> that, that, that That's the method of growing up in the Nakel family. <laughs> find somebody else who's worse and stop complaining about what you have. <laughs> right. Do as I say, <laughs> yeah. not what I do. Uh, Lara Croft from Tomb Raider was voted the most iconic video game character. She's followed by Mario, then Agent 47 from Hitman. What about Cubert? Where does he stand? Yeah, you know what? I, thank you very much, because I was wondering where the Cubert Award is. It's a big Cubert fan in my day. I actually hated that game. What that are you was- talking about? The way you would jump down from like uh, block to block. And- yeah, I never, I could never jump down properly, and I always get uh, killed. But I was part of the challenge of the game. What was Cubert anyway? Was it really an know. alien or was it a what? What? I, it had a horn for a nose. I know that. Yeah. It was not. Uh, it was not clear what he was. Oh, I got your nose. You got a horn for a nose. Right. Yeah. A uh, comic book just sold for six million dollars, which is the all-time record. Not surprisingly, it was a copy of Action Comics number one from 1938, featuring the first appearance of Superman. Experts think there are only about 100 of these kicking around out of the 200,000 that were printed back in the day. The previous record was also held by Superman. A copy of 1939's Superman No. 1 sold for $5.3 million in 2022. In third place is a copy of Amazing Fantasy No. 15 from 1962. That's where Spider-Man made his debut. That sold for $3.6 million. 
hmm. in 2021. You know, I, I, I'm imagining the only people that are buying this stuff is rich douchebags because to throw away eight million, six million dollars on yeah. a comic book. Yeah, but you see, that would be like you know getting that uh, that Honus Wagner baseball card. It's the only one of any real value. Yeah. So is it really that crazy if you got it? Because you're going to wind up selling it for more than you ever bought it. Yeah, I wouldn't hold on to any of this stuff. Most of the real good dealers understand that, that these things only increase in value over time. Yeah, but there's got to be somebody out there who's like really into, like, buys this thing and goes, oh my God, look what I got. Well, look at that guy with the Wu Tang album. Remember that guy? Remember that uh, idiot with the. the that was Martin raising, Shkreli guy? Yeah, he was raising the drug prices and all that stuff by like yeah. 800%. He had that copy of Wu Tang, and he's how much he spent like a crap ton of money on that. Yeah, but he also sold it for a lot too. Well, he didn't keep a, it, right? But he had it for a long time. Can't say I blame him. Why would you spend that much money on the Wu Tang? Would you be listening to that all day long? I just know that Wu Tang is nothing to f with. I, I can Wu Tang may be forever, but you you can only take so much of it a day. <laughs> Says you. Well, if I spent saying. ten million dollars to get the one and only copy of an album. Yeah. I'm going to listen to it every day. Multiple times a day. Well, here we are at this point of a franchise isn't getting a sequel, a remake, or some sort of reboot. It's getting a TV series, and that's exactly what, what Reese, Reese Witherspoon is doing with Legally Blonde. She's working with Amazon to develop a series. It's still early on, so there aren't any plot details. Gee, does it revolve around a rich girl going to a college that she... Seemingly doesn't know anything about, but she's secretly smart in some so many ways. Well, I always thought the uh, the plot details of the actual film were a little flimsy. Really? What are you talking about? Isn't it possible for a girl to just pick up and go into law school just to chase her boyfriend down? Not just to chase her boyfriend down. Yeah. She'd have to have some level of ambition, too. Uh, it's unclear if Reese will play Elle Woods again. She previously said back in 2019 that she'd like to discover what age means to the character. Oh, with Botox injections and everything else? <laughs> Go for it, <laughs> Reese. A lifetime of future Colin. Uh, from college to collagen. Uh, let's see. Kiss uh, has sold just about everything at this point. You can even uh, be buried in an officially licensed Kiss casket if you wanted to. With a K. Right. Uh, so it was only a matter of time until they got around to selling Kiss itself. The guys in KISS have sold their name, logo, music catalog, and image and likeness, uh, all the rights to Pop House Entertainment, the company behind ABBA's live avatar show, and they made $300 million on the deal. KISS made no secret when they played their last show that they would uh, live on in hologram form, and that's exactly what Pop House is going to do. Gene Simmons says, quote, KISS, the touring band is over. What Pop House will do with our images. Our music and our personas <laughs> is unlike anything has anyone has ever seen. I'm Gene Simmons of Kiss. Kiss. <laughs> He's, you know, the dude is 74 years old. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you might as well cash out. Yeah, he should. Uh, and Emma Roberts said she had Kim Kardashian's lip gloss all over her when she had that on-screen kiss. Really? American Horror Story. She was a, Kim must have had something to say. Oh, my God. The last time I had that much lip gloss was when Ray J filled my no-drip bottom lip with nut muck in that sex tape you can purchase on U-Porn for thirty nine ninety five. Did you ever have <laughs> nut muck? No, I haven't had that yet. Mm. Uh, Caitlin? Well, I never got that done and dirty with your mother, Chris Kim, but I once gave her a sack lunch mustache. Uh, chin skin on the rooster fish. What are you trying to say? What I'm trying to say, by the time I was done with her, she looked dirtier than a Florida ditch pig. Okay. Do you know what time I picked her up? No, I don't. Chew 30. And that is your Hollywood trash. I'm going to do ah! And now, Bax's View from the Couch, brought to you by Rocky's Ace Hardware, with Scott's four-step, four easy steps to an awesome lawn. Hey, good morning, sports fans. How the heck are you? Folks, tonight, the Yukon Huskies will be in scenic Cleveland, Ohio, to face Caitlin Clark and the Iowa Hawkeyes in the Final Four, the winner of which will compete Sunday night for the National Championship in the Women's NCAA College Basketball Tournament for the title. 
one of these teams, whether it be Paige Beckers and the Yukon Huskies or the Iowa Hawkeyes, one of them is going to face either NC State or the undefeated South Carolina Gamecocks for all the marbles. Now, for many years, I found myself not caring much about the outcome of women's of the uh, women's tournament. This year, however, it's all changed. Suddenly, I do care about the outcome. Perhaps even more so than I care about the men. Why? Well, I only filled out one set of brackets. They were destroyed after the first hour. And oh yeah, much of my enthusiasm went out the door the moment Marquette got bounced out of the Sweet 16. That forced me to start paying close attention to the what the women were doing. And frankly, it's been better basketball. So much better that it's drawn larger TV audiences. You have ticket prices for tonight's uh, UConn-Iowa game selling for as much as $2,000 a shot. Political advertising in important local swing states is drawing top dollar. And oh yeah, tonight's game also has set records for the highest grossing women's sporting event in FanDuel history with Iowa listed as two and a half point favorites. So... If you think tonight's Final Four, some sort of fluke, some sort of aberration created by the media, the NCAA, think again. Tonight you will have perhaps the most prolific scoring machine in college basketball history facing UConn on national TV with nearly everybody in America hoping that Caitlin Clark plows her way into immortality with a national championship. And sorry, Husky fans, I happen to be one of those people that's looking forward to that too. Not because they're facing UConn, because it will be the most important moment in the history of women's basketball if it happens. Because after all this time, it would finally be nice to see fans riot in the street and set things on fire for a long overdue women's event. And this might be finally the year it happens. You've come a long way, baby, and I think that's fantastic. But hey, and never my yapping sports brought to you by Rocky's Ace Hardware. Which grass seeds should I buy? Should I sharpen my chainsaw? Keith of the East Lawn and Rockies is busy this time of year. Keith's a lawn and garden specialist and outdoor power tool technician. Good people like Keith and rock solid service. You'll find it in every Rocky's Ace Hardware. I'm back. So that's my view from the couch. Rock. Do big name dealerships have your back? No. Does Marcotte Ford and Holyoke? Yes. Why? Because they're a community-based Ford dealership that cares. And you'll see why when you walk through the door. Have a seat in the Lug Nuts Cafe and discuss your dream with a member of the Marcotte team. You'll hear everything you want, selection, service, which means the start of a relationship with peace of mind for the life of your vehicle. Marcotte thanks the community for having their back, and they're ready to have yours. Marcotte Ford, 1025 Main Street, Holyoke. Uh, Joan Jett. With Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. Uh, it is going to be, and I will tell you, uh, mostly cloudy today with a high of 46 tomorrow. More of the same with a high of 48. It's 31 right now in downtown Springfield. Uh, the keyword to cash coming up after 8 o'clock and also after 8 o'clock, open line Friday. Open line yeah, Friday. Yeah, I can't always, wait always, for that. Always a crap shoot. Hey, uh, thanks to everybody who came out last night to the, uh, the shortstop. Uh, over in Westfield for the $20. Well, what, was, what was going on over there? I don't know if you heard this, but there's a $20 dinner and a comedy show going on over there. Oh, I wish uh, I had known. I would have gone. Yeah, matter of fact, it's going to be uh, most Thursdays. Uh, the only Thursday we're not doing it this month is the uh, the 18th, but uh, you can't beat that deal. It, it's $20. You get a showcase of local comedians, uh-huh. plus you get dinner. It's a home run. You it's know? a home, and and you know it's not some uh, sort of slop house everyday yeah. fare. I mean, you're you're, you're yeah. being well fed with good food. Bring and bring bring like a table for your friends. It's a it's a great night out to uh, to share and uh, you know have some appetizers and maybe some cocktails or something like that. Did you have a, uh, a stacked house last night? Yeah, we had we had about ninety people all together. That's uh, that's for, a good. That's a great number for a for a Thursday night. And matter of fact, tickets are already selling at a pace, a fast pace now for next week. Uh, so we're already about a, a a fifth of the way there for next week. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So uh, things things are going good. We had some great comedians too. We had this uh, Cody Montaigne and uh, uh, this guy Will Johnson mm-hmm. and um, another guy. Uh, Andy McDermott, they were all really funny guys, and uh, the, the headliner, he w- he he has this way of, uh, I was telling you the joke off the air, but I can't tell the joke uh, no, on no. the air, but he has this way of, dr- of like, reeling you in that he's going to be so dramatic and sad about something, 
And then he just wham, pow, like hits you in the face with the punchline, and it, where you realize, like, oh yeah, this is a comedy show. This isn't uh, this isn't some dramatic thing. But uh, yeah, thanks to everybody who came out to the uh, the shortstop. I appreciate you supporting local comedy. Yeah. We're gonna do it again next week. So uh, get your friends together and. We'll make it happen. See, this is great. This is what I've been talking about forever. You know, like, yeah, there's like a, there's a good comedy scene out here that people yeah. don't even know about. And then all of a sudden, uh, you know, this little uh, thing happens. Yeah. Uh, and boom, all of a sudden it's, it's exploding. Well, now I'm I, seeing comedy shows all over the place. You think about, you know, economy wise. Again, you know, you go out to dinner with somebody. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's say you and your wife go out to some place, like even a chain restaurant. You're going to spend at least 60 bucks, you know, just sitting there at an Applebee's. Just on drinks. Yeah. This way, you eat 20 bucks, you get food, and you get great comedy, too. Let me tell you how uh, comedy is starting to explode locally. Yeah. Yesterday, I uh, I was dropping my uh, my daughter, Kate, off mm-hmm. at uh, at the train station, or yeah. Union Station. She's going to take a train to go to, uh, uh, to, uh, to New York. Anyway, uh, I'm there. You know, they got that big... Uh, it's like a big jumbotron thing that tells you when the trains oh, are yeah. leaving and yeah, all, yeah, whatever yeah, the hell yeah, it is. Yeah. Well, on the side, they kept showing all these advertisements of uh, you, you, like you know, you see like you know Richie Neal in there for a little bit, saying you know, welcome to Union Station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, you, know, you know, you know, dying out in Springfield. How, was, they, how they have distracted driving with Richie Neal up on a big sign like that? Yeah, I don't, I don't even yeah. know. But uh, but this is like in the lobby of Union yeah. Station, and at one point, there's this ad for a a local comedy show. Mm-hmm. And I don't even know where it was or what the date was. I mean, it wasn't anything that we were associated with, Yeah, but it had a QR code. And I'm thinking, man, has there ever been a bigger need for laughs than for people waiting for a train at an intermodal transportation hub? I mean, you talk about <laughs> the perfect place to advertise your comedy. Was this the thing you sent me yesterday? No, oh. that was something totally different. Oh, okay, which All was right. I, which I, was another thing. It's like yeah. you know, there's another comedy show out, and there's another comedy show, but then there's yours, which is still the very best one in the area. Listen, uh, you know, we were stuck inside for a very long time uh, during that whole pandemic thing, and uh, people just want to be out, but it's also expensive to be out. So if you want to have a good time mm-hmm. economically. This makes the most sense. You know, when you uh, when you look at the world, Steve, and I'm not just talking, you know, here in Springfield. I'm mm-hmm. just talking about the the larger universal world. I mean, there's, there's, there's so many miserable, terrible things that are going on on our planet right now. I mean, I don't yeah. even know where to begin. Laughter is the best medicine. That you know, that's the way to ignore all of life's you know imposing issues. And yeah, if you can just sit there. Eat a uh, eat a few uh, a few pounds of food and then you know watch a comedy show. Yeah, you I, tend to forget about all that terrible thing that's uh, waiting for you when you get back home. Uh, and that, that that that's the thing. Uh, it, it, they say know your audience when you when you do a show. Yeah, but I'm always like weary about that. So I hosted the show last night and I didn't go full like you know uh, darkness that I that I sometimes do. No, that's in like you know, when, you're, yeah. when you're headlining. You let somebody else do that. Yes. So the, the the next kid that came up, he was you know doing his five minutes. He kind of set the tone for the rest of the night. And then you then then you when once you get a gauge on how people are, because every crowd is different. You know. That's true. Yeah. You you may uh, you may do your the same act two nights in a row. Yeah. Only one audience appreciates it, and the other audience you know, wants to take you out in the parking lot with the uh, torches and pitchforks. I've had that happen. Oh, I've had that happen too. Been a long time. I was in Palmer once, and that happened. Really? Yeah. What did you What did you do? It, this was years ago. It was like twenty years ago. Um, I was uh, had a show over at the, I believe it was the Crossroads at the time. Oh, classy place. I don't know if it's still called that or not, but uh, it was that place that's like just on the edge of town. The last time I saw it, I think it had a, a sign that said vacant. I thought, well, that was a pretty clever place, uh, cl- clever name for a place. No, that was uh, for your stomach when we got food there that time, because your stomach was vacant. <laughs> yes. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I I remember doing like an open mic there, and actually, all the all the comedians that I that I used to do comedy with years ago, yeah, remembered this very well because it was just this unruly crowd of Palmer people, which you can imagine, that's something. Uh, 
pretty wild yeah. when you see an unruly crowd of Palmer people. And when you're at when you're living in Palmer yeah. and it's a big night out at the crossroads, you know you're in for a great night. And luckily, uh, well, they were throwing things, but luckily they were throwing plastic cups, so it wasn't uh, like they were really mad. For some reason. Well, what the hell did you do? I don't even remember the circumstances surrounding it, but I ended with, you know what? I turned around and I pulled my pants down and I did the goat for everybody. <laughs> what? That, which is normally your showstopper. And, 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 but by the way, this is when I used to heavily drink. Sure. So I, there was a lot of that going on with it. But it was a, it was very, it was very symbolic for really? me to do that kind of thing. You know, most uh, comedians <laughs> who uh, have any sense of ambition or some sort of tra- trajectory yeah. avoid cow mooning the the crowd if they can. Yeah, well, Jim Beam was doing the stand up act. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I got five minutes on how to ruin somebody's life. Yeah. <laughs> Captain Morgan was your was your joke writer. Oh, he was no, he was the head. He was the middle act, <laughs> Captain Morgan. Yeah, he 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 kind of open for everybody. Actually, See, I, actually, b- my buddy Wise were open. For yeah, everybody. right. Yeah. So they were actually uh, basically tossing you off the stage. Yeah, but wow. I tossed them off the stage. Actually, I tossed them out of the room, not physically, but out of pure disgust of seeing my bare ass and uh, my twig and berries. So yeah. they tossed you off. Yeah. after you. Tossed off first. Yeah, there you go. Uh, now yeah, you set the stage. Now I, now I understand stage. what's going on. But that okay. was in my younger days. I don't do that kind of thing anymore. Were you working here at the time? I think I just started working for you and uh, and John at the so time. So you had yeah. not yet become yeah. a local radio icon. No, just... nobody really knew who I was. Oh, see, I don't I've think been... I could do that today. I don't know. I bet you if you tried it today, you'd probably get everybody standing on their feet applauding. You know what? Come out next Thursday to the Shortstop <laughs> Comedy Show for twenty dollars, and I'll do the goat for you. It's hey, ex- you got to yell it out though. Do the goat. goat! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's six twenty-two on Rock One Hundred Two. You've heard it before. It's six twenty-five with Bax and Nagel on Rock One Hundred Two. Uh, Dan Brown has the full forecast for you. Uh, let's see here. We got uh, the keyword to cash coming up after eight o'clock. I'm going to give you that keyword, right? And what mm-hmm. you're going to do is you're going to take that keyword. You're going to go to Rock One Hundred Two dot com. You're going to pump it in, into uh, into the system by midnight tonight, and maybe, just maybe, you could win $1,000. You know how many tickets you could buy to a $20 ticket and, uh, dinner and a comedy show at the shortstop with 1000 Uh, Not off the top of my head. That requires, lot. yeah, that was going to say, lot. it requires a lot of math. Yeah. By the way, you'll also hear a different keyword at 11, 2, and 5. It's all brought to you by Aquapump and Rock 102 Springfield's Classic Rock. Are uh, you ready to laugh? What the heck? All right. It's Bax and Nagel's Joke of the Day. I'm funny how? I mean, funny like I'm a clown, I am usually. On Rock 102. I make you laugh? Springfield's <laughs> Classic Rock. All right. Uh, I, uh, I match with an empty picture Tinder profile. An empty picture. Yeah, there's no picture, right? Okay. And uh, we had a brief conversation, clever and humorous, so I uh, eventually proposed a date. Yes, she replied. Okay. Okay. And I'm guessing she's going to be like this hideous, uh, ridiculously ugly uh, person, right? Right. However, it was her who answers the door. Little strawberry blonde with a lustrous head, well-formed curves everywhere. Uh Uh-huh. And after exchanging our true names, I asked her what she does for work, right? And she says, Sunday school teacher. Now, I'm taking her to the second best restaurant I can think of, even though I've never had a Christian girl. Right. Okay. Okay. I ask her if she's, you know, it's hard for me to find Christian girls. Is it really? (laughs) No. I ask her if she's uh, if she's hungry as I take out uh, a joint of the, my finest cannabis, right? Okay. And she responds, heavens no, what would I tell my Sunday school children? And I said, well, some people smoke and some people don't, so I didn't give it that much attention. We get to the restaurant, she orders the lobster while I get a steak. I choose the second most costly bottle of wine available, however... When the waitress brings it, she says uh, she doesn't drink, and I'm my mind is blown, right? Right. I say, you don't drink? She says, heavens no. How would I explain this to my Sunday school students? And we laugh at one another's jokes. We have a nice time, but when I sip from that expensive bottle of myself, I realize this is a complete disaster. 
I, I got to end this. Like, this is right. ridiculous, right? And as I'm driving her home, I pass a cheap motel and figuring I got nothing to lose, I said, hey, you, you want to get a room and knock some boots? <laughs> I talk like a boomer. You yeah, want to knock some boots? Knock some boots. Yeah. She goes, I thought you would never ask. Right? Really? Yeah. She says this. It's unbelievable. I'm like, I'm like, what? I'm like, what are you going to tell your Sunday school children? She goes, the same thing I tell them every week. You don't have to drink and smoke to have a good time. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's Christian girls. Are yeah. Wow. Max and Nate. 632. With Bax and Nagel and Rock 102, it's time for news brought to you by Noonan Energy. Reliable service for heating, cooling, electrical, and plumbing. Noonan.com. Here's local radio icon Steve Nagel. Thanks, Bax. An arrest has been made in connection with the homicide investigation launched after a woman was shot on Riverdale Street Wednesday morning. According to the Hamden DA's office, West Springfield police were called to the 500 block of Riverdale Street for a disturbance around 1048 a.m. When they arrived, they found a woman in a parking lot with a gunshot wound. She was taken to Bay State Medical Center but died from her injuries. The woman was identified as 42-year-old Angela Mercado of Springfield. The suspect, 37-year-old Roman Holgan of Springfield, has been charged with murder following the incident. He was arraigned on Thursday in Springfield District Court and is being held without the right to bail. His next court date is scheduled for April 9th. A car was found submerged in the Connecticut River near the South End Bridge on Thursday when the 22 News crew arrived in the area. Uh, around 6 p.m., fire crews from several towns, uh, including Agawam and Longmeadow, were assisting in surveying the water. Oh, my God! There was a fire truck next to the river, and there was firefighters looking into the water. It was crazy! Do we know how the car got into the river? No, no word on the cause of the incident or if anyone was inside of the vehicle. It did cause some traffic issues for drivers on the bridge during the evening commute. Uh, 22 new... Now, this was at... Uh, this was at 10.30 p.m. This was updated. 22 News reached out to the police and fire departments that were involved in the call, but have not yet heard back. 6.30 in the, in the morning right now? Yeah. You know why? You gotta. You know what you, know you got to do? This is, uh, this is the way you do it. Because uh, what I'm thinking is a 22 News crew kid called the police. Hey, can you tell us what's going on down there? Right? <laughs> yeah. You said a, you said a, you, yeah, you do... Uh, you send Sierra Speller on the phone. You know, and she's got that really nice voice. Sure. She, you know, she's like, could you tell me what's going on? Could you give me a message back? And they would call back in a heartbeat. Oh, I'd tell her whatever she Nobody wants to, to talk to the kid from the Polar Express. They want to talk to the uh, Charlie's Angel. You know what I mean? No, I hear you. I hear you. I just think, uh, you know, it's interesting that someone would, uh, you know, someone's car would be in the river. I mean... You know, I realize with that Civic Center parking garage not in full operation yet, it's sometimes hard to find parking downtown, but in the river is not where I leave my car. Well, it's free. <laughs> yeah, and you don't have to fight the traffic getting out of the river unless, of course, yeah. your car is submerged, and that's a little bit more tricky. Yeah, and then the, uh, the I wonder if they get ticketed by the fish police that we were talking <laughs> about yesterday. What if, <laughs> oh, uh, somebody wrote in yesterday. Because we were talking about the DEP cops, you know, because they were talking about the raccoon and everything like that, mm -hmm. and, and I called them fish police, and then somebody wrote in and said, we used to call them trout troopers. <laughs> <laughs> the carp cops. Yeah. I hope I never have to run into one of these guys, because they can pull you over. They're regular, they're, they are real cops. It's, I, I, I joke when I say fish police, but they are fully certified police officers who went through a, a, a training program just as intense uh, as everybody else. You might want to stay away from any yeah. you know, major body of water no. just in case they're out there waiting for you. Uh, I, well, they could pull you over. They got those lights on there. I, I'd hate to think them giving you like a, a waterway tune-up because someone got the, you know, a little mouthy on a radio show. Well, you never know. Stranger things have happened. I'm just saying. What is it? You can tune a piano, but you can't tune, tune a fish. fish. Yeah, that's right. Uh, same thing. A uh, video posted on Russian social media accounts Wednesday shows a United States citizen has signed a military contract to fight against Ukraine. The U.S. citizen, who goes by the name Vil, has very similar traits to former Holyoke City Councilor Wilmer <laughs> Puelo Mota, who was charged with child pornography. In the video Wednesday by a Russian journalist account on Telegram, they claim Vil served in the U.S. Armed Forces and moved to Russia several months ago as a volunteer for the military. 
Ville was uh, convinced to sign a contract with the Russian military unit. Ville has very similar facial traits to Wilma Puello Mota, <laughs> who has gone missing after failing to appear in court earlier this year for child pornography charges and is believed to have either fled the country or created this story to evade the law. In a motion hearing last Friday in Rhode Island Courthouse, the Attorney General's office said the state has received photos and videos alleged to have joined the Russian military. While the state cannot verify the authenticity of the videos and photographs, if they are accurate, the defendant is well beyond the jurisdiction of this court, and if false, the defendant is engaged in an elaborate ruse to conceal his whereabouts. Uh, 22 News has attempted to contact Wilma Puelo Mota on Thursday to confirm the video, but has yet to hear back. Huh. Actually, he would be the guy to call the 22 News kid back versus the Charlie's Angel. Perhaps. Wilmer. Wilmer. Wilmer! Wilmer! <laughs> hey, uh, Fred, something crazy is going on next door. Hey, what's going on over there in Ukraine, Fred? <laughs> a uh, homeless encampment on uh, Texas Road in Northampton is raising concerns about safety and pollution among Northampton residents. 22 News heard that people have very real safety concerns. They say the city is not doing enough to address this growing problem, a problem they anticipate getting worse as the weather warms up. John Maloney is one of many uh, Northampton residents who have reached out to local news stations about the growing homeless problem in Northampton. Maloney said he's called city offices about the problem and gets shuffled around. He even learned that a sex offender is apparently living at the encampment on Texas Road. I'm afraid, Maloney said, for the, my safety and the safety of my daughter, who's eight years old and is afraid to look out the window because there are tents on the riverbank. One city councilor who did respond to his concerns was Quaverly Rothenberg. The 22 News spoke with the city councilor about the, his advice. Uh, 22 News spoke with the city councilor about this, and his advice to me was that this was not something that a city has practice of enforcing. Rothenberg said the practice is a reflection of the city's cultural values and goals to use alternative community-based solutions to solve the problems. Hmm. The cultural values include a homeless encampment? Is that what he's saying? Um, I, I, I guess. I mean, I would like to, I mean, it would be, I'd like to see it a little bit more spelled out here. But. Well, they learned that most of the encampments are on a property that is owned by the city. So they should be kind of... Being proactive to take care of this. Yeah. The Office of Planning and Sustainability said that this land is a flood control area because the Army Corps of Engineers declared this a flood area. No structures are supposed to be built there, not even temporary ones like tents. The Office of Planning and Sustainability uh, told 22 News to reach out to the Department of Public Works because of the office that maintains flood control areas. They did not hear back. They haven't heard back from anybody. Nobody wants to talk to them. That's what I'm saying. You gotta you gotta put the chicks in there and, and have the chicks well, call I, the chicks. Call Alana Flood back. Call Sierra Speller back. That other gal. What's her name? Uh, which one? I don't know. Pick one. Kaylee Collins. There sure. You go. Have her call her back. Listen, you know, I mean, I it, it, I would respond uh, no matter who would call. But you know, maybe uh, you're calling like uh, you know <laughs> after the office is closed. Maybe they're gone for the day. Maybe you're just not calling fast enough. They closed at 3. I called at 302 and they weren't to answer the phone. Well, no kidding. You don't think somebody's still there? Not nobody's at 302. Leave and go to the bathroom? Listen, the show here ends at 10. This, I can't yeah. tell you how many times it left at 9.59. The uh, mayor's office told 22 News to contact. You see, this is the, the, the so they call the Department of Public Works and then they call the mayor's office and the mayor's office, yeah, go call the Department of Public Health. It's like switching people back and forth to different departments. Everybody's passing the buck. So eventually you stop calling them. Maybe. It's actually not a bad uh, uh, tactic. I bet all the city officials are like laughing and laughing and laughing when they figure out that, uh, well, I mean, it, it seems to me like an orchestrated type of thing. Let's not talk to the media by uh, sending him elsewhere. What kind of merit badges do you get at a homeless camp? Uh, like I panhandling don't, is like a, like a badge with a There's probably a panhandling a yeah, merit badge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's like, the uh, stolen valor badge where you yeah. pretend you're part of the military, like but a, you really weren't. Like a makeshift shelter. 
yeah. merit badge. I still, uh, I still have very much appreciation for years ago when they found that homeless encampment down by the North End Bridge in Springfield, and the guy had built this like elaborate bathroom and everything. He had a Homer Home Depot bucket that mm-hmm. was uh, basically set up like a, like a loo. You know, with the toilet seat. Oh, he, to- he totally re- la- latrined the place out. It was actually a very well put together place. Well, you know, some people have a lot of skill. You know, it's not, you know, they're just, uh, you know, they're going through a rough time. Doesn't mean they couldn't like uh, build like a deck or like a, I don't know, let's say like a, like a fire pit. Yeah. Maybe have a good place for like a hot tub or something. I could see that. It's a hot tub. Uh, you ever see those uh, redneck hot tubs with the? It's a above ground swimming pool with a wheelbarrow floating in the middle with a bonfire inside yeah, of it. Right, yeah, right. You could do that. <laughs> There's always something you can do. Listen, if you got the skills, why not yeah. use them? Uh, Walmart is not exactly a world renowned farmers market. No, it's not. But if it's your go to place for fresh fruits and vegetables, they owe you money. Walmart recently agreed to settle a class action lawsuit alleging they'd charge customers more than what they should have for weighted goods, including packed poultry, pork, and seafood, and bagged citrus items. If you can't trust a big, crappy box store like Walmart, whom can you trust? I, I've been trusting them for falling prices all for years. They are, uh, they're shelling out $45 million to people who made fresh purchases from October 2018 to this past January, which covers five years. To get your piece of that, you can file a claim online. Unfortunately, each person's will share will be small. If you, brought, if you bought 50 or fewer qualifying items, you can get $10. If you bought 51 to 75 items, you can get $15. And if you bought up to 100 uh, items, you can get $20. And yeah. anything over 100 you get $25. Yeah, here, here's what you, ha- what you would have had to have done. You would have had to have saved all your Walmart grocery that's, receipts going back a few years. And who the hell does that? Uh, you, can act, you can get more back if you kept the receipts. In that case, they'll give you 2% back on the cost of the weighted goods. But you have to be a big shopper for that to be... Uh, profitable for yeah that. and you have to be a little ocd to keep all those receipts in your house even if you have receipts for five thousand dollars in fresh fruits and vegetables over the past five years they would still only be a hundred bucks yeah it's the most most you can get is 500 and the deadline is june 5th to submit a claim it's almost not even worth the effort no it really isn't not really point. no uh, your Pioneer Valley forecast uh, today going to be cloudy with a high of 46 tomorrow, cloudy with a high of 48. It's 31 right now in downtown Springfield. I'm Steve Nagel, and that's the news on Rock 102. Ah, oh, yeah. Things will be sizzling this spring. Rock 102, Springfield's classic rock. It's 650 and Credence with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. It is uh, going to be uh, mostly cloudy today with a high of 46. Tomorrow, more of the same with a high of 48. It's 31 right now in downtown Springfield. This week on Baxi's Musical Podcast, my guest has been uh, Terry Chambers from the band XTC. His new band, XTC, which plays all of XTC's old music, is coming to the Space Ballroom in Hamden, Connecticut on the 26th of April and the City Winery on the 30th of uh, of April. And uh, next week, my guest is Kerry Alexander from this really great uh, indie rock band called Bad Bad Hats out of Minneapolis. They got a, a brand new album coming out on the 12th. They're going to be at the uh, Bright Music Hall in Austin on May 13th and at the Drake and Amherst on the 14th. Really, really cool interview, and you can hear it on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spotify, and a rock102.com, all brought to you by Metro, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram of Chicopee. Uh, the, the the big eclipse is going to be happening on Monday. Yeah. I uh, I saw, what did I see? There was like uh, some, like some schools are going to like, uh, you know, shut down for like a, you know, like a day. So, a half hour. Yeah, for a half hour, so everyone I, can like stare directly into the eclipse. Well, that uh, that grocery store I boast about all the time from upstate New York, the Wegmans. Yeah, I think they have a few here in Massachusetts, but uh, they're closing for thirty minutes that day, so their employees can go out and enjoy the eclipse. Yeah, you're stuck in a grocery store all day. There's no really no windows up in, uh, unless you're in the front of the building. Yeah. So, uh, hey. No, nobody buys lunch meats or fish or anything between that half hour. Now, I heard a story that uh, I think it's the Yankees that have actually moved the start time for their game on Monday mm-hmm. for you know because of this. 
Like they actually like it was supposed to start a what was it, a two o'clock game. It's now been moved to six. Yeah. So that you know they don't have to stop the game because you know you know, like say like uh, the, the 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 catcher's eyes are being you know burned out because he's looking you know staring or, directly into or, the eclipse. Or there's a bad call and they're like, um, what are you blind? Yeah, I looked directly up in the sky. We didn't have time to turn the lights yeah. on for forty five minutes. Right. Right. Uh, yeah, there's a, yeah. there's all kinds of modifications uh, being made. People on the edge of the path of totality may want to move a little close to the middle of it. You know that line that you saw on the map? Yeah. The predicted edges are not exact and could be off by a few hundred yards. We mentioned this yesterday. Uh, thanks to the uncertainty in the Earth's rotation and because we don't know exactly how big the sun is, apparently. We don't, but it's yeah. big. It's it's really quite large. What? Well, uh how many if what was what's the, the why does the sun don't shine uh they might be giants oh i think of the a million earths could fit inside the sun yes the sun is a mass of incandescent gas a gigantic nuclear furnace forbes posted a list of 15 populated areas that could be affected including parts of austin san antonio cincinnati and toronto there's a map that might be helpful, too, that you can zoom in on to see uh, right. where your best bet of seeing this thing is. Uh, in other eclipse news, cloud cover could ruin it for a lot of people across the United States. It's hard to predict, but it's looking pretty iffy in some spots. Also, NASA is launching three rockets into the moon's shadow to see the eclipse effects in the ionosphere. A, and a comet larger than Mount Everest, known as the Devil Comet, might be visited during the eclipse. Is there some kind of end of the world uh, oh, I'm thing sure. happening on Monday? I'm sure there is. I'm sure. By uh, the way, uh, like uh, Monday is supposed to be a beautiful, mostly sunny day here in New England. Here in New England, but I'm, there's parts of the country that they, you're not going to be able to see this thing. That's what happened when I was a kid. I told you when I was a teenager, the welding teacher let us go outside with the with the glasses, right? And then you couldn't see it anyway because there was so much cloud cover. You want some other moon news? Yeah, give me some moon news. The White House Office of Science and Technology told NASA to decide what time it is on the moon by the end of 2026. Uh, is that like the same time, only different uh, different rotations they're and plan stuff? They're planning to call the new time zone coordinated lunar time. Oh, my God. We... we, we we all going to set our watches to that? I guess so. I'm just reading a bunch of science uh, things here. Uh, Chat GPT's parent company is working on a new AI voice generator that's even better and can impersonate anyone with just a 15-second audio sample. Oh, great. They release samples, and you can't tell the difference. Wow, that makes me feel good about my job. You know, you can tell the difference, though. You can. I, I saw something on the TikToks yesterday. It was like a... A video of, of of Rodney Dangerfield, yeah, talking, uh, you know, doing a joke with like you know references of today, yeah. And while his voice sounded just like Rodney Dangerfield, the inflection of that voice was way the hell off, right? And that's how you, that's how I could easily tell. But the inflection of that voice was way off for you because you know exactly what Rodney Dangerfield sounds like. Yeah, some kid who's never seen Rodney Dangerfield. And starts watching something, or starts listening to something, and watching something like this is going to think that that's the way he sounded. That's the scary part no, of this whole thing. I am aware of it. Uh, that first person to uh, get the genetic genetically modified pig kidney has yeah. left the hospital and is doing well. Oh, good. A study found that uh, sleeping with dogs in your bed uh, affects your sleep more than cats. Uh, and knee pain might make your brain yeah. age faster. These are all that, that kid will be eating from the trough in no time. Yeah, and uh, a study in the UK found CBD products may not relieve pain at all. They think it could just be the placebo effect. I got to tell you, anytime I've used a CBD, uh, you know, uh, product yeah. for pain, haven't really gotten much out of it. No, I'm not a big proponent of CBD. Haven't really felt it. I notice there's another thing called CBN which is another compound in these cannabinoid things, mm -hmm. that actually helps with sleep combined with THC. Okay. Because THC doesn't necessarily make you sleepy, but other ingredients in the product can mm. make you sleepy. I've been uh, using this one thing that puts me to sleep all the time called CBS. And anytime I watch one of their shows, I'm like, 
out like a light. Oh, I uh, this place called CVS. I really? Go to. Yeah. Yeah. These Ambien pills uh, <laughs> knock me right out for the whole night. That's unbelievable. You, know, you forget all about CBD and THC. <laughs> it's 657 with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. Rock 102 wants to know. And now, Bax's View from the Couch. Brought to you by Rocky's Ace Hardware. With Scott's four step, four easy steps to an awesome lawn. Hey, good morning, sports fans. How the heck are you? Folks, I'll be honest. When it comes to buying a car, I'm not the sort of guy who's particularly interested in a flashy showcase vehicle. I'm far more practical. Give me a sturdy, fuel efficient vehicle with a solid record of reliability, and I'm perfectly happy with that. That's why you probably won't see me tooling around town in an overpriced sports car. And if you do, it's only because I've stolen it and I'm looking to strip it for parts. Last Saturday, Kansas City Chiefs wide receiver Rasheed Rice was involved in a multi-car pileup in Dallas, Texas. According to reports, Rice was allegedly, allegedly drove away from the scene of the crash, which involved a Corvette and four other cars. He did not stop and exchange insurance information. He didn't stop to check to see if anybody was injured. He didn't stop long enough to speak to the police. Instead, the attorney for Rasheed Rice claimed yesterday that his client has now taken full responsibility for the accident, yet did not explain the reason why he fled the scene. It was also revealed that the car that Rasheed was driving was a leased 2024 Lamborghini Urus, a small sport utility vehicle with the starting asking price of just $241,000. Now, had I been the driver who initiated such a crash in my economically fuel-efficient crap box, I would have gotten out of the car. Because, you see, that would have been the responsible thing to do. But when you're leasing a car worth $241,000, I suppose the last thing you want to do is take on the expense and inconvenience of costly repairs. I would also imagine that causing a multi-car pileup on a Dallas highway would have a significantly negative impact in your insurance premiums. And then, at some point, when you have the time, I suppose you can start thinking about all those people and those minor injuries. But until you get the bill for the parts, labor, and those surcharges, I guess those people are just going to have to take care of themselves. you got your own problems just waiting for Lamborghini parts to come in. And I bet those selfish victims didn't even consider that when they decided to press charges. But hey, enough of my yappin' sports brought to you by Rocky's Ace Hardware. That hydrangea planted two summers ago, it needs mulch badly. Go to Rocky's for Scott's Natural Scapes Mulch. Get six cubic feet of mulch for just 10 bucks at Rocky's. Mulch that hydrangea and a few other things too. Scott's brand mulch, the good stuff at Rocky's Garden Center and Hardware. I'm back. That's my view from the couch. Rock 102. Rock 102, Springfield's Classic Rock. It's just about 7-Eleven and Bon Jovi with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. Uh, Mix of sun and clouds today with a high of 46. Tomorrow more of the same with a high of 48. It's 31 right now in downtown Springfield. About an hour away from the next keyword to cash. Uh, Listen for it. Put it into rock102.com. Could be worth 1000 bucks in your pocket. You ever? Uh, nope, not yet. But I'm still waiting. Ever uh, been told uh, something about something, or you, or you always believed something to be true until you were like well into your adult years, realizing, oh, that's not true at all. Uh, yes, yes, I have. Uh, I have been in that position. Twenty two News uh, sent out a road crew kid to go play with Fisher cats. That was a, that was yeah. a wise choice. Fisher cats, uh, properly named Fishers, are one of the most popular. Popu- one of the most. I'm sorry. One of the most misunderstood animals that you may find in Massachusetts. Mass Wildlife is informing the public with facts about these small creatures to address some of these rumors. Fishers are shy and rarely seen mammals that have made a comeback in the state after disappearing in the 19th century during mass agricultural land clearing. They have long furred tails that are one-third of their total body length and can weigh anywhere between 4 to 16 pounds. And they have nasty, sharp teeth that can nibble your bum. Well, I guess so. You may have heard some interesting things about fishers, but here's what's important to know about these uh, creatures. Fishers don't scream before they kill an animal. You know, you you hear that fisher cat in the woods? It sounds like a crying baby. But people have claimed to hear a blood-curling scream in the woods and associate it with fishers, but it is not the case. A fisher will not make too much noise while hunting because then it would alert the prey of their their, their presence and also alert other predators of their kill. Mm-hmm. These creatures tend to be quieter but will make growling and chuckle-like grunts. 
However, uh, these creatures are uh, able to make a screaming sound. They will use it only under extreme stress or in unusual circumstances. Right, like if it loses its keys or can't find its cell phone. Ah! Where did I leave that thing? Mass yeah. Wildlife has, uh, has shared some noises that you may hear in the woods. Mm -hmm. A fisher, a red fox. That sounds like a screaming child, too. Now, sometimes. red fox from Sanford and Sons? Yes. I never heard him When scream. you hear from the woods... I think it's the big one, Elizabeth. I'm coming to see you. Yeah, see, yeah, that's that's you know, Red Fox is still alive yeah. and out in the woods. A barn owl and a bobcat. That's where you're going to hear, uh, yes, screams similar to the fisher. Uh, they're not actually fishers, and they don't eat fish. Despite their name, they're not interested in fishing for food. Fishers will pr eat prey that is easiest to come by, such as squirrels. Birds, fruit eggs, and even porcupines. Yeah, they're the uh, the the number one predator of porcupines. Now yeah. think about that for a second. Yeah, you see a porcupine, I don't mess with it. Okay, this is one of those things that I believed my entire life mm -hmm. that porcupines are highly dangerous animals and will attack you. That is not the case. That's, that's not true at all. Right. They are very calm animals. Docile, you could say. Docile. They don't shoot. You know, because all of my scientific animal knowledge came from Looney Tunes. And Looney Tunes had the porcupine mm -hmm. shooting the, the things off left and right. It, they don't shoot off. It's it, when you when you see a dog that has the uh, the the quills and its its nose and yeah. its, all that stuff. That is because they rubbed up against you know the porcupine kind of like back tailed it and right. and you're basically like kind of like when you get burrs on you when you go through the woods, very similar to that. Right. And you can actually walk up to a porcupine, bop it on the head, and it won't even. It, I mean, you can knock it out if you want to yeah but it won't attack you yeah typically they're very adorable animals but i didn't know this until like yeah. last year yeah and the same with possums or opossums or whatever you want to say it they're not dangerous either i always thought that like these things were nasty like they're gonna ravage you as soon as you come into no. contact with them they just look mean. They're designed that way by nature to give it well, an any, intimidating look. Any wild animal can can turn on you and and chew your leg off. I mean, if you if you agitate any animal, yeah, it'll you know it'll defend itself. In the case of a fisher cat, these are nasty freaking animals, and you yeah. know what? they're they're so nasty that even uh, you know, honey badgers uh, feel uncomfortable when they're around. Honey badgers typically don't care. Honey badger, honey badger don't badger really give don't, a crap. Don't uh, D G A F. It, it, actually, yeah. absolutely true. But when you got a fisher cat yeah, roaming around, yeah, that th if that thing's willing to chow down on a couple of porcupines, quills or not, what does that say about the fisher cat? That fisher says, cat's a badass. Doesn't like to be uh, messed with. He'll chew right through a through yeah, a porcupine but, just to get to the nougaty center. Yeah, but uh, you, uh, I mean. If a, a human can walk up dead on to a porcupine, bop it over the head with a bat, and the thing doesn't even blink an eye. Yeah. A fisher cat's not doing all that much work. You just stay away from the back. That's all. We, uh, I, I listen, we had fisher cats at my house in East Long Meadow. We had uh, fisher cats up in New Hampshire. They're all, they're crawling all over the place. And you know, they tell you, you know, keep your family pets inside. Because your family pets start getting curious about, oh, what a cute little weasel. And then all of a sudden, yeah, you know, all of a sudden you got it like, a, like a, a dead carcass and it ain't the fisher cat. Well, that's just nature. That's just the way things work out. I, I, don't, I don't mess with no fisher cat. The uh, name fisher likely comes from European settlers who uh, associated the mammal with similarities to pole cats. Oh, I've known some pole cats. Oh, I know some pole cats. Yeah. Yes. Uh, known as fitch, but over a period of time, fish became fisher. Now, fishers are not of the feline family. They're weasels. Right. Yeah. They are weasels. Uh, they're more afraid of you than you are of them. Yeah, that's what you think. But I also don't want to approach one either. Right. Uh, they're a valuable resource to Massachusetts. Oh, really? Well, they pay taxes. They pay 6.25% versus the normal 5.35% that the rest of us pay in ta income tax. That, that seems a little unfair. Well, they can, all be taxed at the same rate. Well, it's voluntary. They contribute. 
They got to pay for the meal tax on the porcupines are eating. How do they do on, say, like uh, charitable contributions? Oh, it, it, everything's a write-off for them. A write-off. Yeah. You know, they don't even know what a write-off is. Do you? No, but they do, and they're the ones who are writing it off. Yeah, the population of fishers in Massachusetts has come back over the years. They're one of the few predators in the Commonwealth that actively hunt the porcupines. Porcupines in uh, large populations can dramatically affect a habitat by chewing on tree bark and damaging trees. So let's get rid of them by bringing in the fisher cat. I'm telling you, man. Yeah, you know, there. I don't. You know, I, I like a dog, a cat. You know, and I'm I'm okay with those kinds of animals. But when it comes to different kinds of animals beyond that. Yeah, I get a little skittish. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't like. I, you know, I I like looking from animals animals from afar or in a cage where they they can't uh, you know, chew your face off at a, at a zoo. Yeah, but uh, you get beyond that. Some animals are jerks. Oh yeah, look at a monkey back in Connecticut. Travis the monkey ripped that poor woman's face right off her right off her head. Well, he was he was okay until that very last incident. He that last for- incident, he was, you know, he was dressed up in his little overall pants and a hat with a cup full of pencils. Next thing you know, he's ripping somebody's face off. Well, she you t- can't, you can't trust a monkey like that. She, she, she took his seat. <laughs> well, that was my seat at the table. Uh, no, really? That's my the, seat. You're a the, monkey. Go back in your cage. Oh, I don't, what? I don't see the sign that says Travis the monkey on the seat. It doesn't. Every seat in the house belongs to the monkey. See, that's why the monkey is so selfish. Well, no, you can't mess with the monkey. You shouldn't really associate with people who own monkeys either. You know what I mean? If a friend of mine said to me, you said to me, uh, Steve, hey, I guess got a chimpanzee. Do you want to come over and have dinner with me, the wife, and the chimpanzee? And I'd be like, Bax, that is the most dangerous situation I could ever imagine putting myself in. Well, I would. Well, first of all, if I had a menagerie of of uh, of animals in my home yeah. beyond a dog or a cat, yeah. I probably wouldn't invite a whole lot of people over. But you know, you usually see some people like the exotic pets. Yeah, like remember, like a couple of years ago, there was like a, there was a story of some dude who had like alligators in his bathtub. Oh, there was a guy in West Springfield who had an alligator that grew it from a baby, right? And then they had to confiscate it because it got too big. You got the alligator in your bathtub. How are you supposed to take a bath? You got like how many bathtubs you got in the house? I got one bathtub. I'd be, I'd be without a place to wash if I had an alligator in my house. I'm just going to assume people who have uh, uh, an alligator in their bathtub don't bathe themselves. They probably just hose themselves off. I, I would. But yeah, you know, listen. The, the Fisher cat may seem cute and cuddly by uh, by some standards, but I would stay the hell away from them, even if you feel. As though they're not nearly as dangerous as you've been led to believe. I, have you ever seen one? I don't think I've ever seen one. So last summer, so I I have seen one. Like, I actually saw one here. Yeah. But I, it was it was at night, and all I saw was this like this dark animal yeah. walk across the field. That's the only time I actually saw one. Last summer, we're up in New Hampshire. And my wife is up. Is up. I wasn't even up there at the time. I was going to come like the, the following day. She's sitting outside, and there's like a chain link fence behind her camper. Yeah. And one was walking across the chain link fence. Oh. I know. Oh. I know. Oh. You're talking about maybe like, you know, 12 feet away. 12 and feet away. From where my wife was, from where the fisher cat walked on the fence. And I can tell you this. He didn't, uh, he, he's not a resident of that campsite. Oh, he he was, didn't he, sign up, didn't pay the fees, didn't do any of that stuff. Well, like I said, uh, here in Massachusetts, they pay their fair share of sales tax and then some. Yeah. Up in New Hampshire, it's live free or die just like everybody else. Yeah, but that's a gated uh, campsite, Steve. You need a card to swipe your way in. I don't think he had one. Well, you know why? Because how are you supposed to pick up a card with the little paws that he's got on there? They they're, don't have like a posable thumb. It's not like a raccoon. Okay, yeah. I su- I suppose, but nevertheless, man, I don't, yeah, that w- that was uh, very unnerving to me. It just hit me. This is a really stupid conversation. It just hit me. This is one of 10,000 stupid conversations that I've had at this place for the last 29 years. And we're number one. <laughs> 
You know what? What does that say about the other competition in the market? Not only about the competition, but the people who are listening. What does that say about you, that your standards of entertainment are so low? It's not that they're so low. We're the best of the worst around. That's yeah. What an awful thought that is. There you go. It's 723 and Rock 102. Call or text us anytime on the Route 10 time. That's weird. It's 732 with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. It's time for news. I feel weird. Yeah, I know. It, uh, Where's the news thingy? I don't know. It, like, uh, it went away temporarily. What, what, what piece is that uh, symphonic uh, thing? That uh, we play for the news. What is I, that I don't, part of? Uh, I'm, I'm not even. Was it uh, was a, it Bach or Debussy? Uh, well, I don't know. I I thought it was the uh, I thought it was the De Bach, well, but I, it could be Debussy. We always finish on De Bach, never on Debussy. I actually prefer Debussy. Really? Yeah, I really do. Uh, I prefer De Bach. You do? Yeah. I find that hard to believe. Yeah. I figured you'd be uh, more of a Debussy guy. Oh, Beethoven is so nice. <laughs> What are we doing here? What are I we, don't even. I, I don't even I'm, know. I, I just. I feel like I'm at, like I'm out of uh, out of my element without that news sound. All right, let me see if I can uh, if I can yeah. get it here for yeah. you. Let can me just do, do one thing here. All okay, right. let's, let's try that. There, there we go. You go. Oh, All right, it's seven thirty three. Time for news, and it is brought to you by Gary Rome Hyundai. Technicians get up to a five thousand dollars sign in bonus right now. Learn more at GaryRomeHyundai.com slash family. Is local radio icon Steve Nagel. If you know that uh, whatever that that piece is from, because it's 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 just the beginning of a, like a very long yeah. symphony thing. If you know that, text the Route Ten Tire listener line at four one three two nine three one zero two one. Yeah, I'm for all you uh, your classical music lovers who listen to this show. Well, I need to I need to practice. I need to start practicing news at home. So the only way I can do that is by getting the piece of music. Yeah. Rather, yeah, I mean, I guess I could take it from here, but this belongs to the radio station. I want to, I want to no, do you it could, at my you, home. You could lift that. That's uh, yeah. that's fine. Are you sure? Yeah. Is that free use, fair use? I, 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 I guess. I, I, you could also <sighs> go like on Spotify and uh, sur- or, or, or Google and search a Debussy and see what you find. <laughs> yes. Would you like to see my Debussy collection? Um, here, here's the problem, Bax. I'm getting very tired right now. Why? I, you know what? I, I was like bursting with energy, sparked energy this morning when I got, I stopped at Duncan for sparked energy. Yeah. Uh, and I, uh, you know, I was wide awake when I got here, and now it's hitting me that running on about four mm. hours sleep probably uh, is catching up to. Well, during we had conversations yeah. about, you know, I used to do stand up years years and years ago, back in the eighties. Yep. And uh, when I started doing a, a morning show at the age of 23, that sucked the dream out of my system what? because of exactly what you're talking about. That's why I stopped to begin with. Because yeah. there was no way. I, up until like 2008, I was like, you know, going down to the funny bone all the time. I was mm-hmm. doing the clubs like left and right. And then uh, now uh, I'm getting back into it. And I'm realizing, oh, this is the reason why I didn't stay out so late. They, they, years ago, I, yeah, I used to do... A buddy of of mine, I had a buddy, uh, he and I would go to clubs all the time. Yeah. And uh, we were very, very close friends, still are for that matter. And uh, he'd say, hey, let's go to Chicago. Let's go to some uh, open mic nights in Chicago, see if we can get on. And we would go. And I'm thinking, oh, that'd be great. Let's go to Chicago. I mean, how fun would that be? And then all of a sudden, I'd have to you know, get up at 3 o'clock in the morning the following day. And then he'd say, hey, let's go back to Chicago. Things went so great last week. And it got to the point where I said, yeah, yeah I, no. don't, I don't know if I want to do that. Yeah, see, that's what I used to do with Boston. We used to go yeah. to Boston all the time. Well, while that was, uh, you know, it's only an hour and a half. It really wasn't ideal to be coming home at 11.30 or 12 o'clock and then getting up at 3.30 in the morning for a radio show. Yeah. So this is so yeah. this is the problem yeah. that you're facing. It's an absolute, uh, you know, it's an absolute home run, but on the other hand, it, uh, you know, you suffer. Well, you know what? We'll get through it. It's, the show's half over, so we'll, we'll get through it. I hope so. Uh, quite the scene in Agawam on Thursday evening by River Road as com- emergency crews were seen pulling a car out of the Connecticut River. The uh, Oh, it was like one of those crane games. Yes. Uh, the Agawam Fire Department confirming an SUV was found 
fully submerged near the Springfield Yacht and Canoe Club just north of the South End Bridge just after 5 p.m. on Thursday. The several first responders were on the scene, and they were able to retrieve the car from the body of water. No one was found in the car or in the water, but witnesses told Agawam Fire they saw an individual leaving the scene before first responders arrived. The car was towed out of the water, and the incident remains under investigation. Uh, that's a good magnet fishing find. Yeah. Car in the water? Yeah, but yet you have to pull it out of the water. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if you have that kind of upper body strength. I uh, I don't think I do. No. I know I do a lot of deadlifting and stuff, but I don't think I can pull an SUV. I mean, if you're, if you're grabbing like a magnet that's loaded with like nails yeah. or you know, like a bumper or something like that, maybe you could pull that out. Who wants a car filled with poo water anyway? Yeah, good luck try selling that. I like how they, you know, they label it the Springfield Yacht and Canoe Club, like it's some sort of bougie place. It's next to a wastewater treatment plant. <laughs> how how nice could it be? You're telling me it's not a bunch of rich guys wearing those little captain's hats all over the place? No, no, that's uh, sipping mai tais by the dock. <laughs> hey, look at uh, somebody dropped the whole thing of tootsie rolls in the water. Were you playing a scavenger hunt today? <laughs> Uh, this is a continuation uh, or a more expanded story of what we were talking about yesterday. Springfield Fire Commissioner Bernard B.J. Calvi will not face criminal charges related to the killing of a raccoon in late February. Didn't we say that yesterday? Yeah, we did, but now this is written by Stephanie Barry. Remember the one who uh, brought up the, uh, brought it up uh, last yeah. week? She's also the first one I've heard uh, You know, refer to him as Bernard. Everyone knows him as B.J. Bernard! Well, she, she wants to make it sound more astute. Listen, I don't know if it sounds more astute or if it sounds like, you know, she's trying to, like, mock him. Right, Bernard? You know, I don't, yeah, I'm just wondering if that's what she's doing. Because to me, he's B.J. Calvi. Yeah. Saved an entire neighborhood from a rabid animal. She's a She's got a little beef with this whole she's thing. She's got a bit of a chip because, on her shoulder with this one. Just listen to the way this is written. A newly released report from the Fish Police, I put that in there, yeah. obtained by the Republican, portrays Calvi's slaying of the animal by running it over with his city-issued vehicle as something of a mercy kill, despite a public outcry over the incident that was captured on video. This was not this giant controversy that you're trying to make it out to be. He didn't slay the animal. He put it out of its misery. <sighs> the he saved the neighborhood from a rabid animal. The report also sharply noted the third largest city in the state failed to follow protocols related to animal euthanasia. The uh, commissioner's actions appear inconsistent with common euthanasia practices by trained personnel. The commissioner acted in a professional capacity in the interest of public safety with the means available to him at the time, the report says. Among the details included in the report, the animal died of blunt force head trauma. Really? I thought it was squished intestines, <laughs> but that's... I'm not a necropist uh, or whatever you want to call it. shouldn't laugh. Seemingly uh, from a sim single impact, despite the fact that Calvi charged at the raccoon multiple times with his SUV, according to the video footage. I think it was twice. The uh, narrative also uh, says Calvi was in his right to kill the animal under state law. The report chronicles a string of calls from the public to a local animal shelter and police over at least three days in late February regarding the creature which appeared to be limping and wandering in circles around fire headquarters on Worthington Street, much like the other people walking around down in that area. Police refused yeah. to kill the raccoon, and the city animals officer, uh, city's animal officer didn't respond along with other public officials. The fire commissioner is asking for assistance with a raccoon over there, a dispatcher told responding officers on February 21st. The trapper's coming out. Do we not have the nine one one call with the uh, uh, the Enya music behind it? Uh, no, I don't believe we we do. Why are the phones ringing? What's uh, what's I going on there? Uh, Let's yeah. find out what these people want. Okay, uh, Rock one hundred two. Good morning. Who's this? Hello. Yep, I hung up. Okay, well let's try this one. Uh, Rock one hundred two. Good morning. Who's this? Hello. Yeah, you guys see. Yeah, you guys keep talking about the raccoon. Why don't you play that song by the Beatles, Rocky Raccoon? Well, we've done that before, and uh, we don't right, we don't fine. like to beat it's a dead I, raccoon I horse. Uh, guys every morning going to work, and 
I keep hearing about the raccoon and that, and it's like you guys don't know what to like do, and it's like. What do you mean we don't know what to do? Make a tribute to it. I don't know. Dude, oh. we, 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 right, we started. Answering the phone. All right, dude, we, we started the uh, Rocky Raccoon thing like four seconds after we heard the story. Yeah, yeah. Well, really? What's the next one, though? I don't know. Uh, Rock 102, good morning. Who's this? Rich Frey from Massachusetts. What's up? Hold on, let me... Um, yeah, turn your radio down. I know. Let me put the uh, move button here. All right. All righty. I muted it. Okay. Uh, how, you kid, how, how are you kids doing this morning? Uh, we're fine, thank you. What uh, What's on your mind? How can we help you? I'm living large today. You know why? No. I had a friend of mine give me a big wave. Yeah. Well, it ain't so big, but it's a Bose wave. Oh, a Bose wave? Oh, yeah, the yeah. wave radios? Very nice. Yes, yes. And it's a CD player and all the, the whole night, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a wave, right? <laughs> yeah. So, like, I'm waving. Hi, how you doing? Thank you very much. So, and I'm out here in the woods in New Jerusalem. And all what? by myself, I, I plug it in. I live out in the woods in New Jerusalem. Where is that? Um, are you familiar with the Franklin County here? In, there's a New Jerusalem, Massachusetts. Yes, sir. Wow. Okay. Wow. I didn't. Uh... And you're and you're out there in the in the woods, like in a cabin or something. Yeah, I'm in a shack. All right. Well, shack we, we we appreciate shack you listening. Yeah. But listen, the reason I called is because all right. I had to put a little stick in the back of the bunny's bum to get an antenna up from a CB radio to be able to tune in to listen to you kids this morning. Okay. So when I say I'm wicked, I'm wicked pissed because I grew up down closer towards Boston Way. Uh Uh-huh. But now I'm a transplant out here in Franklin County and... I'm just trying to hang on to what little bit I got left. Okay, well, listen, and, we, uh, we're, we're, we're glad you're on board. Uh, uh, ha- thanks for calling in from uh, New Jerusalem. Can I can I request a special request for a song? Sure, go ahead. Uh, how about one child to carry on? Blood, sweat, and tears. Blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah, yeah okay, that's it. that's a classic. One child born. Carry to carry on. Oh, in yeah. other words, know the song. The Father, oh yeah, our son Jesus, one son to carry on. There you go. All right. Well, listen. You have yourself a good weekend. Well, you have just been hey, a delight. On that this show. went out to uh, Senator Richard Ray from New Jerusalem. All right. Okay. We'll do it. All right. Thank you very much. Now. Love you, kids. Thank Lo- you. Hey, love you. Love you too. All right. There yeah. you go. Well, there you go. That's uh, that's, that's very nice. Well, that was interesting. <clears throat> It was. Hey, did I tell you that open line Friday is going to happen after 8 o'clock? Yeah, but it looks like everybody, yeah, let's just keep picking up calls. What, what the hell? You might as well make it an open line morning. Uh, Rock 102, good morning. Who's this? Hi, Jones. I'm back. All right. All right okay. yeah. uh, Rock 102, good morning. Who's this? Yeah, I listened to that first caller driving everybody crazy again about the Rocky Raccoon. Yeah? Yeah, that guy was pretty whacked. That guy needs some issues. Yeah, I know. Okay, we ha- obviously hasn't been listening since the very beginning. Obviously, the guy's like out in the ozone layer somewhere. Yeah, there you go. All right, All right man. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks for the call. Okay, just keep answering. Uh, right. Rock one hundred two. Good morning. Who's this? Hey, this is Scott. Hey, Scott. What's up? Hey, um, I called the Route Ten Tire thing and texted it uh, last week, but I I wanted to report a story that Channel Twenty Two News had. They said that you don't need to wear a safety belt in Massachusetts, that it wasn't a law. What they said was that if they pull you over for something and you don't have your belt on, then they can ticket you. But that if you're if they're just looking at you and you don't have a belt on, it's not reason to pull you over. Is that true? Yeah, that's always been the case in this state. I thought, I, oh, I, my bad. I thought they the can, safety belt they, law, you have to they can give you the ticket if they pulled you over and they see you not wearing a seatbelt. But that, they can't pull you over if you're not wearing the seatbelt. That can't be the initial reason. But you know what? They'll find a reason to pull you over for something. Yeah, and you know what? Don't be a dope. Be safe. Wear your seatbelt anyway. 
Yeah, I always thought that was the law. You had to buckle up, whatever. I learned what? something new. Well, you do have to buckle up, but that, that's yeah. what I'm saying. That cannot be the reason why they pull you over, but it's still a ticketable offense. Yeah, click it or ticket. Yep, I get you. All right, All right man. All right, guys. Okay, there you go. Glad we cleared that up. Yeah, kidding. Brock 102, good morning. Who's this? Hey, what's going on? What's up? Yo, how did this uh, start? What? Uh, this is it's not 8 o'clock. Yeah, I no, know, it's but it, it just turned into we started talking about raccoons and some guy got mad. You're gonna find this. Guy, you're gonna find oh, this hard to believe. Man. Sometimes the show gets I away got, from us. Oh yeah. So what? Hopefully you guys remembered which day was your guys' day for the pickle barrel. Of. The pickle barrel. The pickle barrel. What are you pickle talking about? Bear. What are you talking I don't about? Remember. I don't no, remember. I don't, we don't remember. I mean, could you help us wow, out here? Wow. I told a joke on here a couple while back about a pickle barrel. You guys ate that up. All right, it sure is a great joke, but uh, yeah, I forgot what happened about an hour ago. So uh, you'll have to forgive us if we don't recall. Oh, no, you're forgiven. You're forgiven. Oh, cool. Worry, well, great. All right, well, listen, you, uh, you have yourself a good weekend. Right, uh, you too, man. All I've, right, thank you very much. Okay. I, I've had three texts so far going, WTF? <laughs> What's going on here? This is crazy. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? We'll have more of this hijinks coming up after <laughs> 8 o'clock for Open Line Friday. It's uh, Flavin in downtown Springfield. I'm Steve Nagel, and that's the news on Rock 102. Why out? Duncan has just released a new energy drink called Sparked Energy. Sparked Energy. That's a crock. It's 813, and Billy Idol with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. It's going to be a uh, mix of sunny clouds today with a high of 46. Tomorrow, more of the same with a high of 48. It's almost like the snow and wind didn't even happen. It's 34 in downtown Springfield. All right, let me do uh, a little bit of the business here first. Uh, it's time for the keyword to cash, the $1,000 keyword. Could put 1000 bucks in your pocket. Today's keyword for this hour is the word rich. That's Rich, as in, I would love to be rich with a thousand dollars in my pocket. R I C H. Go to the keyword to cash contest page on rock102.com. Enter the word rich, your chance to win a thousand bucks. Again, rich is the name of the uh, is, is the word R I C H. Good luck to you from Rock 102 Springfield's Classic Rock. Well, there you go. All right. All right. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Here we go. go. Live from the Richard Grieco Studios in East Long Meadow, Massachusetts. It's Open Line Friday! Alright, 293-1021, let's establish the rules here, since some of you forgot about it last week. No foul language, no hate speech. No. Try not to be a knuckle-dragon idiot. And uh, you know what? Call it, hey, if you went to the show last night at the shortstop, the $20 dinner and a comedy show that happens most Thursdays, uh, let like us know. To hear it. I want to hear about it. All right, the phones are already blowing up. Uh, Rock 102, good morning. Who's this? Hey, you guys talking to me? Hey! hey! What's up? Hey, how's it going, you guys? It's the Huck Man, and I didn't know that Ted Kaczynski is living up in Franklin County. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's he's looking for a pal, man. Yeah, you know? he's, listen, it's, uh, it gets lonely when you're sitting there writing your manifesto all day. Oh, trust me, I know what that's like, but hey, I'm the real number one fan of you guys with the Rock 102. Uh, it's uh, hard to argue, uh, Hawk, man. Hard to argue against. Well, I've been listening to you guys since about 1998, and I used to go to the fine establishment of, called Palmer High School. Mm. All right, well, listen, we appreciate uh, your support, uh, Steve. It's always good to have you. But you guys keep doing what you're doing and rock on, man. All right. All right you, you rock on, too, okay? All right. Bye-bye. All yeah, right. There you go. Uh, rock 102. Good morning. Who's this? It's Chris from Enfield. Hey, what's up? Hey, want to hear some blonde jokes? Yeah, why not? What the heck? What's a blonde's favorite nursery rhyme? I don't know. What's a blonde's favorite nursery rhyme? Hump me, dump me. <laughs> What did blonde say when she woke up under a cow? I don't know. What? You guys still here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I get it because of the utter. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, there you go. All right. Yeah. Okay. You're a little slow, but yeah, you got it. All right. Thanks, man. <laughs> yeah. All right. I got, I got one more. Oh, one more. Okay. Let's hear it. 
Did you hear about the new line of paint Sherwin Williams got? It's called Blonde. It's cheap. It's not too bright, and it spreads easy. Yeah, all right. Hey, you should have hey, ended hey, with the other hey, one. You should have. Yes. All right, thanks for the call. There we go. Rock 102. <laughs> Good morning. Who's this? Hey, this is Eddie from Chicopee. Hey, what's going on? Hey, you guys were talking about the uh, well in Twitching Water last week, or the, earlier this week. Okay. My wife can actually do that. She, she can what? She, um, you guys were talking about finding water with the stick. Oh, with oh the, yeah, with the, yeah. With the, yeah, with right. the, uh, the, the old uh, Native called, American way. Yes, it's called, I believe it's called twitching for water. Twitching My wife for, can actually do that. You hold a branch. You hold a branch of a weeping willow out, and you walk around the property well, looking for the water, right? Yes. Um, it doesn't have to be a weeping willow. I've actually seen her father do it with a pair of pliers. Pliers? Ooh. Pliers. God's honest truth. No kidding. Well, that sounds. That's my wife. My, my, my wife is. Um, they have nine girls and seven boys in her family. <laughs> and her. Her and her father are the only two that can actually, well, her father's passed away, but her her and her father's can actually, out of the whole family, is the only two that can actually do it. Wow, that's unbelievable. Yeah, and, and her twitch actually goes up. Most of them go down toward the water. Now, when she holds the stick, it actually goes up in the air toward the sky as opposed to the ground. Okay. All right, well, that's good to know. Very interesting. Yep. All right, you, you have yourself right. a, have yourself a great weekend. You too, thanks. All right, All there right. we go. Rock 102, good morning, who's this? Hi, it's Linda from Ludlow. Hey, Linda from Ludlow, what's up? So the raccoon story seems to keep going on and on, yeah. and I give that guy credit for taking that animal out of its misery. I think well, most okay. people do. Uh, there just seems to be a reporter who feels that there's this. It's this giant controversial issue, which really never was controversial at all. Really? Yeah. I, mean, I don't know. Into another story. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, thank you very well, much for the, for the call. call. All right. Uh, Rock one hundred two. Good morning. Who's this? Hey, this is Andrew from Chickabee. What's, What's up, up, Andrew? Hey, I just want to let you guys know back to Nagel that. I've been in Massachusetts for 12 years, and ever since I got to Massachusetts, you guys have been the pioneer for my valley. Ooh, I like that. That sounds like you're kind of yeah, coming on to us. Yeah. <laughs> every morning, every morning I got to put you guys on. Oh, that's great. I wake up at 6. Well, we appreciate you being a part of it. Thank you I, so much. I would have thought well, we would have been more of the poo to your Connecticut River. <laughs> No, you're the poo to my team. Mm. Oh, yeah, okay. I got you. I got it. There you have it. I like yeah. that one. All right. All right. You All right. guys have a good one. Yeah, you, you do. Too. Uh, Rock 102. Good morning. Who's this? Hi, it's John. Got a hey. question for you. Yes, John. Hey, uh, what happened to Marty Caproni? Oh, he's just taking some time off. He's got some personal stuff to deal with. Oh, he's still, still, still with the, the station, still okay? Oh, yeah. yeah no, he's fine. fine. He's yeah. fine. It's all good. Okay, cool. Thanks. All, All right. right. There you have it. Uh, Rock 102. Good morning. Who's this? Good morning. Did I win? You did not you win. Did not I'm sorry. Win. You're sorry. the 500th caller. Sorry. This this is Ray. Good to see you, Ray. I, you know, and I, I heard it. They said that rich is the word for the day, so I thought I won. No, no, no. no. You actually have to go to the website and enter that word on the keyword to cash website. Oh, if they could figure out how to work a website, it'd be a billionaire by now. Yeah, that's that's we all are now that we know how to use websites. If I could use a website, you can figure out how to like figure out this cell phone of mine. I'd be a billionaire. I'd be just another one of them voiceovers there on the wacky uh -huh. one or two point yeah. one radio station. Yeah, well, it, it's hard. Hey. I see it. You kids are kicking it. And if it wasn't for this Bose radio or me sticking a little CB antenna in the back of it, uh -huh. I would Same. not be listening to you kids this morning. So well, thank you kindly. Hey, is, thank you very much for calling in and letting guy, us know. This is the guy from New Jerusalem. Yes. Yes. All right. The one man. The one man from New Jerusalem. All right. Well, listen, thank you very much. And you have yourself a fine, fine weekend in New Jerusalem. You kids enjoy it, and you know what? Before the weekend's out, I'm going to order me up 
a new pizza oven. Okay. okay. I'm looking at I'm looking at the unis. Ah, they, those are great. And, you know, and if I if I get an uni pizza out front, and I got guys riding by on their motorbikes and this and that, and guys with hot rods, I'll be out there selling slices like they do down in Boston. You should absolutely do that, especially in some of the uh, yeah. high traffic areas of New Jerusalem. There you go. Because the only pizza shop in town is uh, the general store on Friday nights, and they do a good buy. Uh huh. But, but I I could do be I could be doing pizzas. I could be doing hot dogs. I could be doing uh, sausage. Oh guys yeah, mm, nice. very sausage. versatile. Oh, the very versatile. I spoke to Dave the other day, and Dave said, you know, because I can't find his sausages anywhere in the Hannaford and the Market Bastards locally. Uh-huh. And so, but anyway, so I took a call down to this main shop, and I spoke with the guy. And I'm like, hello, is this the guy? <laughs> He's like, yeah, this is Dave. I said, Dave, you the guy? He's like, yep. So I'm like, hey, Rich Ray from New Jerusalem. As you kids rock and roll, and, hey, I'm not going to pick on you much more before the sun is up, but I will because now that I can tune in and listen to you, and I get your phone numbers. Yeah. Yes. I'll call any time. Yeah, call, call any time. Anytime. anytime you You're want. always welcome and, to call. And, and I'm not going to be Lenny, Lenny Clark or uh, Colin Quinn, you know. I'm no comedian here. I'm just one guy trying uh-huh. to make it along in the world. Okay. Well, listen, we appreciate it. You have a good weekend there, okay? Hey, you kids do the same. Oh, we will. Hey, Thank you we very, will. We yeah. bed. All right. Hey, hey, you man. know what? 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 Do like us, do like us Bostonians do. Go jump in a nice cold lake. Okay. All right. We'll yeah, get right to it. it. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Sweet uh, Jesus. Rock 102. Good morning. Who's this? Hey, good morning, guys. Back to you. I heard your view from the couch this morning. You're a little disillusioned there. The only university on the planet to win back uh, men and women's national champions at the same time as UConn. They did it in 2004. They uh-huh. did it in 2014. Yeah. And now it's 2024. So it's a getting their year. Yeah, it's no, it, it, it's not going to happen. Don't you worry about it. Uh, you'll have to wait another 10 years for that to happen again. <laughs> okay. All have right. a good day. All right. Thanks. Bye. There you go. Rock 102. Good morning. Who's this? Thomas. What's up, Thomas? Hey, what's up, guys? I just wanted to see how you guys were doing this morning. I didn't really listen to you earlier like I normally do. So I just wanted to say what's up. I've been listening to you guys for like 25, 30 years, man. Awesome. However long you've been on the radio. Well, thank you, Thomas. Well, appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't mean to get personal. Not in the old man passed a few years ago. And I guess it's kind of like a personal tradition I'm trying to keep going. Like, you know, I, I, I was there with O'Brien, everything, man. It, uh, you guys always make my day in the morning, and I listen to you on the way to work all the time. Awesome. I kind of uh, I, I can't, I, I can't get enough for you guys' as crap. <laughs> what, what, was the Back Steve and Dave show your personal Vietnam as well, sir? It leaves you speechless, yeah, doesn't it? It, it, yeah, us it leaves too. us speechless, us too. too. Yeah. Thanks all for the right, call. Thank you. All right, there we go. All I right. think we're all out of time, Steve. I think we, unfortunately, we are. Too bad, because yeah. it was going so well. All right, very good. An excellent open line Friday. Not a single profanity in the entire thing. Somebody texted in and said, uh, today's show is a fever dream. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> I, I don't know how people can start drinking so early in the morning. I don't think they stopped. I guess not. It's 825 on Rock 102. Live in concert, Saturday nights at 9 on Rock 102. The best performances from classic rock. How much you can save. 833 with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. It's time for news brought to you by Gary Rome Hyundai. Technicians get up to a $5,000 sign-in bonus right now. Learn more at GaryRomeHyundai.com slash family. Here's local radio icon Steve Nagel. Uh, thanks, Bax. Uh, that uh, former city councilor in Holyoke, Wilma Puelo Mota, uh, there's been new video released by Russian media outlet and shared across many social media out- accounts uh, today appear to showing him joining the Russian military. 
Wilma! Puelo Moto was set to go to trial back in January on child pornography charges in Rhode Island. However, officials there uh, told Western Mass News that days before the trial, he fled the country, taking a flight from Washington, D.C. to Turkey. The Rhode Island uh, Attorney General's office said their investigation will continue into Wilma's Puelo Mota's uh, whereabouts and have no further comment at this time. Wilma! Puelo Mota also faces obstruction, forgery, and counterfeiting charges. He has pled not guilty to those charges. Dude's racking up a lot of problems for himself, isn't he? Well, I mean, uh, joining the Russian military? Well, I mean, that's uh, that's like one of the things he's done that's a little questionable. But, uh, you know, he's got like a whole laundry list of things that are accumulating. How bad is... Sh- you know, I mean, you're probably going to go to jail if you stayed here. Yeah. You know, uh, if they if they had gone to, to, to jail, is that worse than joining the Russian army? I would think even the Russian army, if they did just a little bit of vetting on the guy, would yeah. probably say, I don't see this as a good fit yeah, either. I don't think so. Anyway, um, so he's uh, th- th- they're still looking for, for him. He yeah. might He might be in this video. It could be all just a setup, too. Uh, you know, we were talking about uh, the six inmates who sued New York's Corrections Department over its decision to lock down the prisons uh, during the eclipse. Remember we talked yes. about this yesterday? Well, they will get to watch the celestial event after all. Well, thank goodness for that. Lawyers for the six men incarcerated in the Woodbourne Correctional Facility in upstate New York said Thursday they've reached a settlement with the state that will allow the men to view the solar eclipse, quote, in accordance with their sincerely held religious beliefs. They filed a federal suit last week arguing the April 8th lockdown violates inmates' constitutional rights to practice their faith by preventing them from taking part in a religiously significant event. The six men include a Baptist, a Muslim, a Seventh-day Adventist, two practitioners of Santeria, and an atheist. And the bartender said, get the F out of here! <laughs> Uh, Thomas Maley, a spokesperson for the Corrections Department, said the department has agreed to permit the six individuals to view the eclipse while plaintiffs have agreed to drop their suit with prejudice. The lawsuit came to an appropriate resolution, he added in an emailed statement. The department said earlier this week that it takes all requests for religious accommodations under consideration that those related to viewing the eclipse were currently under review. Well, the, what what a happy ending to a, such a sad story. You know, this is one of those heart to, heartwarming stories that uh, you know, I'm going to be telling everybody I know all weekend long. Hey, did you hear about those guys in prison? They're finally going to get a uh, chance to see that solar eclipse from the prison yard. Well, but do they give them the special glasses? I don't know. See, Actually, that... I mean, can they, can they, can every, does every cell have that like, you know, four by four window? I mean, can they look out the window and see this or what, what, what are they going to do? Yeah. If I was the jail guard and you got some like dirty scumbag who's, uh, you know, serving time for horrific crimes who wants to go see the eclipse. Like, yeah, just go look up in the sky. You don't need any glasses or nothing. Steve, you know better than that. What? Those kinds of criminals aren't in jail. They're let out in the streets of Springfield. Yeah, well, they have to be back out uh, to reach dinner time the next night. You can't okay. have somebody staying in jail yes. all overnight Those, long for if, days at a time. If this were Massachusetts, they'd all be out by now. Well, you would like to think that they would all be out by now, but, uh, you know, th- th- this is New York State. It's a completely different uh, judicial system out there. Yes. Actually, aren't they? I thought they were. New York City was having a problem with the same thing, with these low bails and these people getting out. And Good. I don't think we're the only ones I'm, dealing I'm, with. I'm that. sure we're not. And uh, you may find this hard to imagine. I I don't usually pay a lot of attention to the problems in New York. I'm too busy worrying about our own problems. What are you talking about? I'm just doing New York stories because uh, it's Friday. I'm exhausted uh-huh. from uh, doing that $20 dinner in a comedy show last night at the Shortstop Bar and Grill, which happens most Thursdays. So, uh, Including you, next Thursday. Including next Thursday. By the way, delicious meal last night. Pasta, meatballs, salad, rolls. Mm. Ah. Lip smacking. And we got, uh, we got other stuff on the menu coming up next week. I just slid that in there. Did you see how it was? It was very that? smooth. Very smooth. Like silk. Yes. Well, this is the reason why you're a professional, Steve. Uh, let's go down to Connecticut. You want to do that? Okay. Police are investigating stolen dirt bikes dumped in Oxford. 
At around uh, 1.55 a.m. Thursday, officers received a call about suspicious activity near Freeman and Fiddlehead Roads. They stated they had seen a person pushing dirt bikes there, but when police arrived, nothing was found. Later in the morning, uh, five dirt bikes were found near the brushy area on Fiddlehead Road. You know where Fiddlehead Road is, don't you? I actually can't say I do. Police say one additional dirt bike remains missing, a 2024 KTM 450 SXF. Ooh, that's totally choice. Makes the 2024 KTM 449 SXF look like a a tricycle. Right. It's possible that these criminals are utilizing Facebook Marketplace to target individuals with dirt bikes, the Oxford police said in a statement uh, Thursday. Officers are reminding the general public to be mindful when listing items for sale. This is why I don't put things on Facebook Marketplace. Yeah, I don't uh, I don't either. I feel a little uh, sketchy about some of that stuff. I like to uh believe me, I'm not I'm not immune from being scammed. Nobody is. Nobody is. I like to think though that I you know, have learned a few things over the years where you kind of got to watch out for who you're dealing with and what you're dealing with. Mm-hmm. When I put uh, last year, I put, or was it last year? I think I put my pool. I had a above ground pool I was giving away, and uh, there was a deck to go along with it. Sure. And I uh, I chose local people to take these items away. People that I sort of knew, you know. Uh, one guy took the pool, and then the other guy, I, you know, he's a listener of the show, but he, you know, he had the ability to take the thing away, right? Uh, but I would never, I was getting people like f- that weren't from around here right. messaging me. Hey, is this still available? And I'm like, dude, you don't even, li- you live like 150 miles away. There's no way you're going to come all the way up here. For an above ground pool that's like fifteen years old, yeah, that you have to take that, that you, you have, have to, to take ta- disassemble down. and take away. Yeah, and you can tell right away because especially like what's your what's your Venmo or your Cash App? You know, it, it's a scam. So yeah. you, you just gotta you just gotta have the wherewithal. Like, there's all kinds of things that I would like to sell uh, that I'm just uh, I'm a little skittish about that stuff. You what else? You what do you want to sell? You got anything? Uh, good? Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to say, but you know, there's a couple of things I wouldn't mind unloading to get to new ones. We should do one of them uh, radio show swap meets on this show one day. A radio tradio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we can do that. Uh, tell us what you're selling, what you got. Yeah, and then you know, swap it on the air, and then you know, you know, it, it might start off like uh, like some toothbrushes, and by the end of it, we're giving away a car. Yeah. Oh, we got a brand new 1993 Chevy Nova. I don't even think they made the Nova. In I, I don't even know. Lumina. Lumina. Lumina, Lumina yeah. Lumina, right. Yeah. yeah, Lumina. We could do a radio swap meet. We'll need a producer to but make see, sure that, that happens. That's why we can't do this right now, because we need somebody to write down the items. And we're not we're not organized enough to do that. We should be organized enough to do that. But, but we're apparently, not. Why aren't we? I know. You, you didn't answer me. Why aren't we equipped to do that? Uh, I I don't really know the answer to that. I haven't really organized my thoughts well enough. Well, maybe we should look into that. <laughs> maybe we should. Uh, the phrase "toilet rat" is trending after a guy in Montreal dealt with one. His case was just published in a medical journal, which is never good. <laughs> toilet rat. What's what? a toilet rat? A 76-year-old man found a rat in his toilet bowl and decided to remove it himself. Unfortunately, it bit his two fingers. Well, at least it didn't bite his... Uh, it was other stuff. His danglers. Right. You know? Uh, he went to the ER where they cleaned the wounds and gave him a tetanus shot, but he was back at less than three weeks later with a fever, headache, stomach pain, and a rapid heart rate. Not shockingly, it turned out the toilet rat was pretty disgusting. The guy had a bacterial infection called Wheels disease that was ravaging his kidneys. And that can be fatal, but luckily they treated him with antibiotics and he discharged him from the ICU a few days later. Uh, no word on what came of the toilet rat. There's all these things that are dangerous to you. Remember the guy with the pork? He ate the pork, uh, the bacon? Yeah. And then he had a worm in his brain yeah, yeah, yeah. for years? Look at all the dangers that you run into every day. Just just by doing something simple, by eating pork tartare. Something innocuous Yeah, by eating pork. Yeah, you know, there's a guy trying to pull a, a rodent out of his toilet. Well, who wouldn't want to pull a rodent out of the toilet? You know, how come Kermit the Frog never got a bacterial infection? I don't know, Steve. But I know where you're going with this, and it's, it's uh, foul. 
I'm just talking about you know an amphibian. And, yeah, I know, you know, I know, I know, I know. I know. for all the different things that uh, you know you could run into. You're a Pioneer Valley for. By the way, we have some professional guests coming oh, now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Legitimate people are about to join us. It's going to be a uh, mix of sun and clouds today with a high of 46. Tomorrow, more of the same. It's 36 right now in downtown Springfield. I'm Steve Nagel, and that's the news on Rock 102. Oh, yeah. Who do the pros trust to keep them looking good? Park Cleaners on Allen Street in Springfield and Main Street in Wilbraham. Park Cleaners is your... Field's Classic Rock. It's 8.50, and Lenny Kravitz with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. You know, I've always wanted to make you trip by throwing an office chair right in front of your pathway while you're trying to do something <laughs> Steve, if I had a dime yeah. every, once, every time someone threw office furniture at me, I'd have enough to buy a lunch. Well, do you want to participate in the amazing office race? Uh, we got uh, some folks from the uh, Young Professional Society, Tyler ha- uh, Hadley and uh, Ryan Broussard. Good to see you guys. Hey, thanks for having us. So tell us uh, what the uh, what the uh, the amazing office race is all about. Yeah, so it's an event that we're holding with uh, Conklin Office Furniture. Uh, what it's going to be is an amazing race type of setup in their showroom in Holyoke. And we're going to have participants run around, do puzzles, do riddles, and ultimately compete to win prizes while networking with other peers. Much like much like in our office upstairs. Yeah. Lots of trivia, lots of questions. A lot of, a lot of dodging of furniture. Yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And finding the furniture, that's going to be the big, big clue. So. Yeah. So th- this is like a big networking event you're talking about, right? So, I mean, who who's expected to participate in all this? So we have networking events every single month with the Young Professional Society at different locations throughout the region. And really, it's it's young professionals, and every, we, we always get the question, Am I, what, what do you mean by young professional? Uh, but the way we see it is young of age, young in a career, maybe mm-hmm. you just start a new business, you want to meet new people that you might be able to share your business with. So there's a lot of ways that we see young professionals. And anyone who's interested in meeting people should come. I mean, we generally get between... 40 to 60 people every month. What about the middle-aged unprofessional? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyone that feels young at heart, we'll oh, welcome yeah. you okay. into the, in, that's yeah, a the real, group. That's a real catch-all, isn't yes. it? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Exactly. If you just want to make friends, come on through it uh, as well. We're a really easy group to get along with. Yeah. So so you got uh, you got teams going to be paired up uh, for, for other people. You don't even know these people. You're just getting paired up randomly. Correct. Whoever's yeah, so people will come in, they'll sign in, and we'll yeah. pair them up as they're coming in to groups of, you know, probably five people. Yeah. And then that gives them the opportunity to network in between themselves while they're doing the amazing race. Now, this is uh, this is free for uh, Young Professional Society members, but it's like 10 bucks for non-members? Exactly. Yep. So if you can become a member um, starting at $75 a year, which is pretty nice. I mean, you get free access to pretty much all of our third Thursday events. And for non-members, it's just ten dollars to attend. Come check it out, and then hopefully you'll be interested in becoming a member. That's pretty cool. But you get uh, like samples from breweries and stuff like that too, right? We do. Yeah, mm-hmm. we have a couple local breweries coming down. They will be there providing samples for us. Also, some food will be, will be provided. So, I mean, that's mostly the way uh, these things uh, happen, right? I mean, I know when I've when I was young. The only way I would go is if food and and like beer was being served. That's yeah. usually that's usually a good enticement for young professionals. It's a big pull in for people. oh, definitely yeah, a draw, it's definitely a, good a draw. draw. <laughs> is anybody doing uh, keg stands, uh, beer bongs, anything like that? That's that's, is, that's pre-professional that's, yeah. samples, Steve. Samples. Oh, that's oh, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of the unprofessional. <laughs> yeah, that's that's, 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 yeah, our, that's our society, the collegiate unprofessional yeah. society. Yeah. All right. So, how can you get tickets for this if you want? You can sign up right online through our website, uh, springfieldyps.com slash events. You can see it there. You can sign up as a member, as a non-member. You can also find it on our social media pages very easily. And it's just a few clicks away, answer a couple questions, and you're good to go. And uh, the event on the 18th is at Conklin uh, Office Furniture, which is uh, 75 Appleton Street in Holyoke, right? Correct. All right, I got that right. Awesome. Good. All right. Uh, Tyler Hadley and Ryan Broussard, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Should be a lot of fun. Thanks for having us. It's uh, 854 with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. Here comes the money. Here we go.